also mentioned that she paid for her own breast augmentation, right? He said she paid for like one of them or something. So if she'd only had one, then she paid for it. Like, I guess he helped her with the other. I don't know. Helped her find the doctor? No, like half of it. So now your testimony is that he said, told you he paid half for half of her breast augmentation? No, I don't think he ever told me that he paid um, for it at all. But he said something about they accused him of paying for it, and he said he may have helped like half, like, and paid for one. I don't really know. Are you saying one it. breast? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> The government told you Katie was involved, right? No, sir. No, sir. You went along with it? No, sir. Because you can't fight the feds? No, sir. So you took it and ran? No, sir. She's been involved the whole time. It's the only one he speaks to. I'm sorry? It's the only girl he speaks to is Katie. Whatever she tells him to do, he jumps and do it. That's his weakness, her right there. Well, there's two things that stuck out to me. Uh, the first one that was that Wendy Adelson had kind of a complex about being a single mom because Charlie had told her that you know, no man wants to date a single mom. So we had this conversation repeatedly. And then I show up to dinner and Charlie's dating a single mom. So that was a little surprising. I cannot recall every exact word. I remember references to fighting the word police and that he definitely had a criminal record which didn't sound like speeding tickets, it, it sounded serious. All right, so with this wire, Charlie Adelson gets contacted by his mom. She says she was given paperwork, which turns out to be this article about the murder. She says this TV probably cost $5,000. You agree with me that TV sounds like their code for this murder, right? Rejection, lack of personal knowledge. Overruled, overruled if you know. I don't know, ma'am. Then Donna Adelson tells Charlie that it has to do with the two of them and the man mentioned an ex-girlfriend, right? Yes, ma'am. And then Charlie calls you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Why did he call you? I have no idea. You don't know? No, ma'am. I don't know if that's before or after or when he spoke to his mom or when they mentioned my name or when he said ex-girlfriend, like it's been going round and round, I'm confused myself. Any Anybody that he owes money to? No, he owes money to me. He owes money to you? But not, okay. not me. Okay, all right. All right. What was the value of it at the time of your husband's death? It was a million dollars. Not two million? A million for each child. Two million dollars. All right, and did you believe prior to your husband's murder that you were the custodian of that money for the benefit of the boys? No, we were divorced, so I was the custodian while we were married. But once we were divorced, I was no longer the custodian. So you were aware that he had designated someone else to yes. do that job? You didn't inquire through your attorney about challenging the designation of the sister as the, the custodian of that money? I wasn't trying to challenge the designation, no. Do you have access personally to that money? No. All right. What about a 401k? Did, did your ex-husband have a 401k when he died? I believe he did. All right. And are you the custodian of that money for the benefit of the boys? I am. That's how I pay the taxes. <laughs> All right, did he have a pension? I don't know. Social security benefits? I don't know if he had social security benefits. As um, survivors, my children receive social security mm -hmm. benefits. $4,800 a month, right? That's right. Deferred compensation fund? I don't remember. $217,000, does that sound familiar? I don't remember. Uh, what about the IRA? Did he have an IRA? I really don't know. $100,000? It's very possible. 
What about a checking account? I don't know if he, I assume he had a checking account. $15,000 in there, right? Wouldn't go to us, but sure, I imagine he had a checking account. It wouldn't go to you and the boys? Where did it go? Funeral expenses. Okay. You don't know anybody that he owed money to? You don't know anyone? I know, besides you. But Ten months ago, someone killed the father of my children. First we got divorced, and then he got murdered. In casual conversations, I don't know whether to call him my ex-late spouse or my late ex-spouse, except that late ex-spouse sounds like latex spouse. I bend his clipping into his car seat and bend out of nowhere says, Bobby, I bet Abba knows a lot more about God than you do. And I said, well, I said different people have different beliefs about mm -hmm. God. And so we get to the car. And Ben was like, is God a man or a woman? I said, well, some people believe that he uh, or she is an old white man with a long white beard. And Lincoln, who's three and a half, said, God is dead. And is Ben's your oldest then? And then who's your three and a half year old? Lincoln. Lincoln? And I said, I, love that name. I said, Lincoln. Like, I was like, it's like Nietzsche in the back seat. Like, <laughs> It's like Lincoln who's still in diapers, but is having a sophisticated conversation <laughs> about God. And I just was laughing and laughing. When you were showing me that chart, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I wish I could remember. I don't remember because you're asking me exact amounts and where I worked and well, he names didn't... I can't remember. <laughs> Would you ever ask someone to do something like this? Not in a million years. Okay. Do you think someone would do this for your benefit without asking you? No. What good does it serve? I made my brother, um, the one, his name is Charlie, the one I'm really close to, he makes a lot of jokes in bad taste, and it was a joke he made. He bought the TV for me this morning that got broken and I was talking to him about whether it made sense to pay to fix it or whether I should get a new one and it was always his joke that like he knew Danny treated me badly and it was always his joke he said I I you know I looked into hiring a hitman and it was cheaper to get you this TV so no. instead I got you this TV okay. um, I mean he would never <laughs> He's my big brother, and he's been taking care of me since I was little, but he would never. And I, I said, I told that to the repair guy this morning. Right. That's okay. <laughs> I said, he asked me how much it cost, and I said I didn't know because it was a gift, because my brother said it was cheaper than a hitman. It was my divorce present. Okay. <laughs> Such a horrible thing to say. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Did... Wendy Adelson ever make a joke in your presence about her TV? Yes, ma'am, she did. Um, in October of 2013, the first time I had went to her house on Aqua Ridge and we were going to watch a movie, uh, she made a joke, which she characterized as her brother's joke, but she was the one telling it that, uh, you know, her brother had looked into hiring a hitman, but a TV was cheaper. And I heard her repeat that joke at a later occasion. All right, so you heard that joke a couple times? At least twice, yes ma'am. All right. Was there a dinner, a time when you went out to dinner with your brother after the murder where you vomited at the table? That, that happened? <laughs> it's just yes or no? Well, would you like to know the context? It did happen. Okay, and who, who was present at that dinner? Just my brother and me. Okay, and that was kind of your first time out after this murder had occurred, right? After it happened, I couldn't eat for several weeks, and then I was completely terrified to leave my house. Mm -hmm. So this was the first time I tried to leave the house and eat food 
and that is how it ended up. I threw up. At the dinner table? Mm -hmm. In a restaurant? Yes, it was very embarrassing. How long after the murder was, was that incident? Probably about a month or so. Was the dinner intended to be a celebration of the fact that your husband was murdered? Absolutely not. Did your brother refer to it as a celebration? I highly doubt that. Could that have been one of his jokes that was in bad taste? He may have been celebrating the fact that I was willing to leave the house. Um, the brother that you're real close to, I have to do a lot of elimination at the same time. The brother that you're really close to, the one that joked about the TV and everything, what'd you say his name was? Charlie. Charlie, and he's in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what kind of car he has. He has like five cars. Can't tell me all of them. He drives, a, he's, I think one of them is an unmarked police car. Oh, really? He's a bit of a character. Do me a favor. Only come over if you're going to be ice tonight. If you're going to be a pain in the ass, please stay home. It's 8.30. I'd like to watch the basketball game. I'd like to work out with my girlfriend. I'd like to eat some Maine lobsters. That's, that's what I'd like to do. Yes, I was saying that I'm his last ex-girlfriend. That's what you said in 2019, right? Yes, ma'am. That you were his last ex-girlfriend. Yes, to my okay. knowledge, yes. We've had testimony during this trial though, that he's had several girlfriends since you dated though yeah. between that and the bump right yeah that's but i was explaining here that i'm his last ex-girlfriend like i was his he was dating june i think at that time mm -hmm. so i didn't know about whitney so i was his last ex-girlfriend you didn't know about whitney no i just i heard about it now wasn't that like his first serious girlfriend after you and him broke up i don't know i'm that's why i'm getting confused because i'm learning so many things from here that i don't know when i knew that that was his girlfriend or i knew of that girlfriend i i know about june because she testified over here okay, I mean, you knew that he was talking to lots of girls Yes, ma'am. And dating lots of girls. Yes, ma'am. And you would actually chastise him in, in the messages about like him dating so many girls, moving them into his house, letting them drive his cars, right? Yes, ma'am. And you would check in with him about these girls. So you would say, you know, are you still talking to this girl, right? Uh, I might have mentioned it, but just to say it, you'd have to show me. Okay. In December of 2015, you say, are you still talking to the lame chick, the girl who's hot and is really not? And he says yes, or are you still seeing her? Yeah, but I don't know which one that is. Okay, I guess my point is, you know that you you knew that you were not his last ex girlfriend. I, to my knowledge, I was his last ex girlfriend because he was dating June. Mm -hmm. Didn't really know. I didn't know about Whitney. I don't know if I've learned it from from trial. But I was his last ex-girlfriend. If he was dating June and he dated me, I'm his last ex-girlfriend. Well, by your own admission, in the wiretap call, you say you've had a million ex-girlfriends, right? I understand that, but I'm saying I'm his last ex-girlfriend. We're talking about this. Right, but he had, you and him had broken up in the fall of 2014. And this bump is in the spring of 2016, right? You'd been together with Sigfredo Garcia again for a year at that point, at the time of the bomb. At that point, okay. Right. He had dated tons of girls in between that, right? I believe so. Okay. You were not his last ex-girlfriend then. But I'm saying from the timeline from June, like June, the girl June. Right. I was his last ex-girlfriend. We were talking about it in here. Like, you're talking about the, wasn't this from the that was bump? from October. From of the bump? No. The like, transcript you're looking at is from October of 2019 when you say you were his last ex-girlfriend at the time of the bump. That's what you said last time was the reason that he called you when an ex-girlfriend was mentioned. But and that's you, what I'm saying. But you're, you're talking about a specific date on this, what's going on right now, too. This is not, not on the 19th. This is the transcripts from the 19th. Right. I'm saying, though, that you knew you were not his last ex-girlfriend. Isn't that true? I'm confused because I'm saying that I was his last ex-girlfriend. What are you talking okay. about from when we were talking in Dolce Vita? Right. So you okay. thought you thought that you were his last ex-girlfriend. Objection. Before. Ask and answer. I'm so. Let's see if you can ask it one more time. Yes, sir. 
You believe you were his last ex-girlfriend yes, before the bump, and that's the reason he called you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I understand why I'm a suspect. I guess I'm not a suspect. I understand why you would think that I would do this, but... Ms. Adelson, this is all about you, isn't it? Excuse me? This. This is all about you, right? Uh, I was called to be a witness and I'm testifying, so I don't understand the question. Is it a question? He told everyone around the community that I was mentally ill because only a crazy person would leave him. Let's talk about her ability to tell the truth. Okay. You know her very well. You were dating her for a long time. Well, a few months, seriously, okay. but go ahead. How would you describe her when it's, you know, trying to determine whether or not she's telling the truth? I found her to be a deeply deceitful person and not that great at it. You just said a moment ago that you, you disagree that Hitman killed Professor Markel. That, that's what you said, right? So my question to you is, if you're able to say, well, it wasn't Hitman, then who? Tell this jury. Who on this planet would have wanted to kill Professor Markel? I have no idea. All right. Let's get into that a little bit. But I want, I want to make sure that's clear. This joke is made right before Professor Markel is murdered, right? The joke was made many times. It was made right before Professor Markel was murdered, yes or no? Yes. July 18, 2014, you're interviewed, and you make a statement saying, I knew this would happen. You said that, right? I did. All right. Now, I want to talk about your knowledge and your belief on this. You're a smart person, right? How am I supposed to answer that? Well, let's go through your resume. You went to Brandeis University, right? I did. You graduated magna cum laude. I did. If you could explain to the jury what that means. It means I studied a lot and got good grades. All right. It means, and to speak, I'm from the Northeast. My Boston accent may give it away. It means you're wicked smart, right? That's very you had a high GPA, you. a very high GPA. I work hard. You also went and you got a master's degree from the University of Cambridge. I did. You were a Gates scholar. I was. You then go to the University of Miami School of Law, which is a, a top tier law school, tier one, right? Okay. <laughs> Right? We're talking about your level of intelligence. You went to the University of Miami Law School, right? I did, yes. You also clerked at the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, right? I did. Now, to get a clerkship out of law school, it's a very difficult thing to do, right? It's challenging. You have to have top grades. You have to go through a rigorous selection process, right? Yes. You then become a, a, a professor at the, the, the Florida State University College of Law, right? You're also a published author, right? Now you're just embarrassing me. Why, why are you embarrassed that you're a published author? I just, I don't like talking about myself. I feel like you and I look a little bit alike. Do you see this as you're looking at my face? You have very pretty blue eyes, they're much bluer than mine. <laughs> but I feel like, anyway, it's like In the looking hair. at my sister, <laughs> similar hair. Um, I, must look awesome right now, but... Daniel's been shot, okay? And we have to find out why and who did this. Can you help with that? I will try. Okay. <laughs> Let's stay on topic and ask a question again with everything that we just went through. You're a smart woman, right? I am a smart woman. There's information about this case everywhere. You'd agree with me on that, right? I'd been advised by my lawyer not to read it. All right. Now, we're not talking about reading stuff. There's podcasts. Also not to listen. TV shows. Also not to watch. Articles. Don't read. And so you've made the decision. Now, you're a lawyer yourself too, right? I am. And you made the decision. I'm not going to look at any of this stuff. Correct. I don't want to know what happened to the father of my two children. Not I don't want to know what happened. 
How can you say you love those boys if you don't care who killed the father that they loved? Of course I care who killed the father that they loved. Then why won't you look at the stuff? I've been advised not to. Are you afraid that when you look at it, you're going to realize that your brother did this? I am not afraid of that. I've done nothing but help in this process. Do you honestly expect this jury to believe that you haven't confronted your brother about all of this? Yes, I do. Yes, you did confront him? Yes, I do expect them to believe that I did not confront my brother because I didn't. Or maybe you don't need to because you know the truth in this case. You already know it. That he went behind your back, right? Did not happen. Just like he has done with past boyfriends. He's done that in the past where he's gone behind your back when you were having problems in a relationship and dealt with it himself. No. Ms. Adelson, you understand that until you expose your brother what he did, that everybody's going to consider you as guilty. You understand that, right? What is the question that you're asking me? You understand that until you expose your brother and explain what he did, that he went behind everybody's back, that he hired a hitman to murder your ex-husband, you'll remain guilty in the eyes of the world. I can't speak to the eyes of the world. I can only know that I have done nothing wrong. And you agree with me that it had been years since 2016, since the last time they had seen them. The visit stopped when they threatened to put my children in foster care, yes. But up until that point, they did have visits. But you got no problem letting them see your brother Charles, right? I'm sorry? You have no problem letting them hang out with your, your brother Charles, who's now sitting in custody for first degree murder. Well, they can't see him now, can they? No, they can't. But I'll ask the questions. And, and let's put it this way. I think you're a straightforward person. And I think at this point, if you had anything to do with this, you'd have already told me. Okay. And you haven't. I want to figure out who this is because right. I'm honestly worried. Well, let me ask you, if you found out that this was someone that you personally know, would that change your mind about what should happen to that person? About what should happen to that person? For prosecution purposes. Um, no. <laughs> Is there I mean, any somebody, way that you would think somebody... somebody could, tried to kill my ex-husband, they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Regardless of who it is. I mean, it would be different if I thought it were my brother, but I don't think it was my family. Okay. Uh, anyone outside my immediate family, that's a tough one. Okay. But I don't think my immediate family did this. So okay. if it's anybody else, yeah. Okay. Would, would do you think that this guy, Charlie, would even be capable of doing something like this? No. Let's no. just talk. He's a joker. Okay. All right. Didn't, do you recall giving an interview with law enforcement on the day that your husband, ex-husband, was murdered? I recall sitting with law enforcement for six hours, yes, I recall. And did you tell law enforcement something different in that interview about the culpability of your family? I'm sure while I sat for six hours completely traumatized that I said all kinds of things. All right, and was one of the things you said while you sat for six hours completely traumatized that you wanted the culpable parties held accountable unless it was your family? I don't believe I phrased it like that, and I think you're taking my words out of context, but sure. But sure? But sure what? No further questions. Welcome to The Weakest Link. Once appearing on that old quiz show, The Weakest Link. When I was little, I wanted to be a giraffe. <laughs> Is there anything else you've ever dreamed of? Well, I was in the circus for a while, as a contortionist. Let's, let's talk about your brother's jokes now. You don't deny that he joked about hiring a hitman. He did. You don't deny that he repeated this joke. He did. And he made this joke right before a hitman murdered Professor Markell. I don't know that to be true. Okay. He made the joke right before, and I'll leave out the hitman part, Professor Markell was killed. He made the joke the morning that I talked to him. Yeah. Can you think of one person in this world that would actually hire two, two people to go kill Professor Markell other than your family? Your Honor. 
Ms. Adelson, please answer, please address me and answer the question. I'd love to calls for an unbelievable amount of speculation. I mean, I'm supposed, to, I'm, I'm responsible for coming up with, uh, that's the prosecutor's duty, you know, to figure out who's responsible. And he called you because he wanted you to deal with this for him, right? I don't know if this is the reason why he had mentioned my name and why he wanted me to call. Okay, well, even before, though, that you knew your name was mentioned, you were willing to help him with the problem, right? I was listening to him. I don't know at that moment if I, I was saying that I was willing to help him. Okay, I want you to look at your that same page, 154, lines 17 through 19. In 2019, you said... Before your name was mentioned, you were willing to help him with that problem. I said, I said yes, ma'am. Okay. And you're asked by Charlie Adelson to call this number. You don't know why he's asking you to do this other than you're his last ex-girlfriend. You, and then the person that you get to call the number coincidentally just happens to be the shooter of the crime that Charlie Adelson thinks he's being blackmailed for, right? I mean, can you ask your question one more time? You were asked by Charlie Adelson to call this number yes. on the article. Yes. You got someone else to do that for you, right? Yeah, I asked Sigfredo to do it. So you coincidentally get the person who was the shooter of this crime that Charlie Adelson's being blackmailed. I mean, right? I was just asking Sigfredo to call the number. Okay, and just coincidentally, he also, he's the shooter. I didn't even know about any of that until the trial. Okay, so that is a coincidence. I, if the, in your opinion, I believe so. All right. Okay. Um, I, no, I don't think it's a coincidence. I'm saying you're saying that that's a coincidence. You didn't actually have anything to do with it. No, ma'am. And you didn't actually know what it was about or who you were getting to call for that reason, anything? No, ma'am. Other than the fact that they said um, Katie and Tutho. Yeah, and when, when Charlie Adelson told you that his mom said it has to do with Tuto and Tato, why didn't you say, you know exactly who that is, Charlie. Tuto is Sigfredo. No, he was saying it in different ways, and then that's why I'm, I never corrected him. I know, like, they've asked me about that before. I didn't know that I had to correct him and say, well, you know him. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know the father of my kids. Like, why are you saying the name different? And he said that, though, multiple times. He said, I don't even know who Tudo is. He said that on the phone, and he said that in Dolce Vita, didn't he? Um, on the phone, I think I heard it, but on the Dolce Vita, I don't remember. And you just, though, you just didn't correct him, just didn't ask why I he was acting like he didn't know who Tuto was. That's the whole reason why I'm even in here, because I wasn't asking the questions. Why don't you ever mention Garcia's name to Charlie Adelson? Why don't I ever mention his name? Right. Like the Tuto? No, why don't you ever say Tuto or Garcia to Charlie Adelson? Why do you just say he this, he that? I never mention his name to him. Right, why not? I just don't, like, I'm not going to be, like, saying, I don't know, I just, I didn't. Why don't you ever mention Charlie's name to Sigfredo Garcia? I've always referred to him like my friend, or vice versa, like I always say my friend. I don't think they want to hear about each other's name whenever I'm mentioning them. So whenever you talk to Garcia about Charlie Adelson, you always say that person or my friend. Or my friend, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you, if you called him and were talking to him about that person, well, how does he know who you're talking about? Did I did I ever message him saying that person in the wiretap call? Yeah, you were you're talking to Sigfredo Garcia and referring to Charlie as that person. I I don't recall. Why don't you just say Charlie? I never mentioned either one of their names because I don't know. I just never. I just didn't. Right. Yes, because somebody mentioned my name. We've right. gone over this. Out of all the people in the world, though, he chose you. And you're saying that... Because they mentioned my name. Okay. Today... And I'm, Tuto's name. And then mentioned Tato's name. So, yeah, that's why I was confused. Now, if two people are sitting next to each other and riding in a car together, 
You continue with your question. Would you expect them to be calling or texting each other? All right, hold on. What's your objection? That's sustained. Do you call or text people when you're sitting next to them? Generally, I do not. But at the same time, just because you're not talking on the phone or texting with someone, that doesn't mean you are together, right? That's correct. Okay. You could just not be with the person and also not be communicating with them. That's correct. Okay. All right. What happened in the car before y'all went to Dolce Vita? I don't even recall that. That's what I was asking when they said that there's a 10 minute meet up in a car. Like, where's that video or where's that? Did he search you for a wire? You saw him Charlie? About Charlie? Yeah. No, because I don't even recall that happening. When did you find out that Dan Markell was murdered? I believe I found that when, when Sigfredo got arrested. Okay, so that was the first time that you'd ever heard of Dan Markell, his brother-in-law, being murdered. Yes, ma'am. Charlie Adelson never told you that? No, ma'am. And you and him talk all the time? Not all the time. You'll see the phone records. It shows. I've seen them, and y'all talk all the time. You were just telling me earlier that like our conversations stop, like dwindle down. No, I was saying that you said that he was ghosting you. Okay. Okay. You and Charlie Adelson talk all the time, right? I guess so. Okay. And when Sigfredo, I mean, he never mentioned to you that Dan Markell had been murdered. No, ma'am. What was it that you thought he was saying that made national news, BBC News, Good Morning America? What was, he talking? Who's, what was who saying? What was Charlie Adelson talking about? What made I national don't know. News? I didn't even know what BBC was. You know what Good Morning America is, Yes, so, right? I, I, I know that, but I didn't. It wasn't anything that was like popping out. He never mentioned Dan Markell. He never mentioned Tallahassee. He never mentioned anything about a murder. Those things would stick out. Right. I would think that they would. But he didn't talk about that. I'm telling you. And Why and didn't you ask? I mean, what, what was on Good Morning America? What was on national news? I don't remember what happened. I mean, we have the whole video, and it right, didn't even pick up anything I said. to you what he was talking about. He didn't explain anything. He was saying scenarios. Okay. In the Dolce Vita video, he's saying it's either somebody trying to blackmail his family or it's the cops working undercover. Yes, Why would it be the police? Why would the police be investigating his family? I don't know. Why isn't your first question, why in the world would the cops be running an undercover investigation on your family? I don't even know if I ever mentioned that. I don't know. Don't remember what happened in 2014. The mysterious killing of a prominent law professor. Murdered execution style. Shot and killed inside his home. Even by Florida standards, the shooting of law professor Dan Markell is a shocker, a brazen assassination that has residents of his prosperous Tallahassee neighborhood quaking in their tassel loafers. Everyone here is under the assumption that the Markell, that the Adelsons hired Rivera and Sigfredo to commit this murder, okay? Because that's what's sexy. It's always the wife, the wife's family. You don't think the Adelson family would organize a hit on their former son-in-law to have the grandkids closer? These are dentists. These aren't the Sopranos, okay? That's quite verbose. Would you agree with that? I imagine it is. That at some point Danny fired or alienated all of his attorneys and started doing his own legal work. Is it fair to say that your mother, Donna Adelson, was following this divorce, these divorce proceedings pretty closely? She was definitely being a little bit over-involved. Yeah. She was pretty invested in your personal life. Is that fair to say? She is one of those moms, yes. What types of things did your mother suggest that you could do to try to um, coerce or acquire the ability to relocate your kids to Miami? She suggested that I could change their religion. Of who? Of my children. And why would that affect 
the relocation effort. Because religion was so important to Danny that that would be, that would be a real hot button thing. Okay. And these filings are pretty venomous, is that a fair characterization? Not on, not on my part. Well, on both your parts, right? No, ma'am. Okay. And was there a motion? I want to draw your attention specifically to this motion. It's on page 441 of that document in front of you, Exhibit 59. This motion was filed by Dan Markell on March 26th of 2014, so shortly before his death. I see it. Okay, what was that motion? Former husband's counter motion for enforcement of MSA on parenting issues and motion for contempt and sanctions. And in that motion, did he allege that you were violating the marital settlement agreement in a variety of ways? Yes, it looks like he did including failing to facilitate communication between he and the boys, failing to keep him informed of where his kids are, failure to communicate about parenting decisions like the kids' schooling, diet, and extracurricular activities, things like that. Yes, that looks right. All right. And was he, as part of this motion, seeking to enjoin you from allowing your mother to have time with the children that was unsupervised by another adult. I am not seeing that right now, but I can continue reading through okay, it. Okay, take your time. Actually, oh wait, still going. Is this a question that you need refreshing on? Did, did your husband make these allegations? You don't have an independent recollection of that? You don't have an independent recollection. Okay. He made a lot of allegations that weren't true, so I need right. to look through to figure out which ones we're talking about. Okay. Okay, I see it. I see what you're referencing. All right, so in that filing, Dan Markell alleges that your mother is disparaging him to the children, correct? That is correct. And he was seeking a court order saying she couldn't have contact with the kids unless there was another adult present, correct? I see that here. I don't think I took it seriously at the time, so it didn't really lodge in my memory. Did but your I... mom take it seriously? No. Was it ever ruled on? I don't know. If it were, it should be here, right? Yes, ma'am. Is it here? No, it's not. It was scheduled to be ruled on in August of 2014, right? I don't know. Right? I don't know when it was scheduled for. I knew. No, I do know that nobody took it very seriously. Okay. Did you change their legal names about a month or so after the murder? No, not a month or so after the murder. No. Okay. When was it done? Even sooner than that? No, absolutely not. Um, when I tried to put my children in school and their faces had been unblurred on CNN and all across social media. I'm not I'm sorry I thought to interrupt we were in you, but if you'll answer my question, my question is when were the boys' names changed? The boys' names were changed after I wrote a letter to Danny's family explaining why I was changing their names. When were their names about changed? About a year after. Okay, and that was when they were legally changed, July 6, 2015? I don't Is remember right? the date, but if you have it, that sounds correct. Okay, so they were legally changed on that date, but just a month or so after the murder when you were enrolling them in school is when they effectively had their names changed. That is not true. Okay. And what did you change their names from and to? I changed their last name from their father's last name to mine. From Markel to Adelson? That is correct. And did you also drop the middle name of one of your boys that was a tribute to his paternal side? It was a tribute to both families. Did so you drop it? I did. I lost an honor to both families that day, yes. Now, years later, arrests are made. It's clear who committed the murder, Sigfredo Garcia Luis Rivera. The Adelson name has been dragged through the mud. 
Why haven't you continued to protect your boys and change the name back? I will be changing that. I'm not going to change the name back. I don't think that will help. One day I'll change all of our names. Tell us about the way the, I guess, the beginning of the end of your relationship. Can you give me a date? <laughs> <laughs> My understanding is there was a big fight on June 29th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we went to yoga. So went to a yoga class together? We attended a yoga class together, the most awkward yoga session in history. <laughs> okay. Despite seemingly just breaking up with me and not wanting to see me for the next three days, had a deep interest in what I was going to be doing on Friday. Speak openly about how upset she was with her divorce? Yes, it was the top of, of conversation. If we went to dinner with friends, that's what we were going to talk about. It, frankly, it got old. Yeah, Danny was part one. How Bad Tallahassee was part two. That was the plot of every day, basically. I mean, she wrote a book where she shreds Tallahassee. I mean, she really doesn't like Tallahassee. Isn't it true that she thought that she was better than the people that lived in Tallahassee? Yeah. I want to participate in Democracy Lives in Miami because this city is very important to me. I chose this as the place to live, to raise my children, and to face some of the issues that I think are most pressing in our, in our country and in our world today. I was raised in a family where I understood from a very early age that we were privileged to live in America. Um, and that my ancestors came from a place where they fled religious persecution. And so I understood that had decisions been different, had laws in this country prevented my ancestors from arriving, that we never would have survived where we came from. The reason why I say my parents are going to say I did it is because after we got divorced, I wanted to move to South Florida. And I filed a petition to relocate in the court, um, and the court said no. So, because of the kids. Because I mean, yeah. So you can always leave. You just can't leave with your kids. So. Um. Now I want you to explain this to the jury because bottle service is kind of like a Miami, Vegas type. If you're not in one of the very big cities, this is not something that is you know you at every single bar across America, right? Correct. It's this specialty thing where people can come in and they pay a ridiculous amount of money for a bottle, right? Yes. So it's like a bottle of Patron would probably cost a thousand dollars. Well, not a thousand. This track attracted both. You have the white collar and the blue collar. The white collar mostly are the horse owners, and the you know the, the and the blue collar is the ones that are betting on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was not a long period. Like I said, she was like a shooting star. She it's not a sleepy bar with one regular at the end of the bar, nobody else in there, right? We have plenty of nights like that. But you also... <laughs> Were you dating... Charlie Adelson at the time when the first arrests were made in this case of Mr. Garcia and Mr. Rivera? Yes. All right. And did Mr. Adelson's behavior change when the arrests were made? Um, yes, they did. Can you explain how his behavior changed? Well, this case kind of blew up in the media, so he was obviously, um, he went through a lot of stages. At one point, he was very depressed and um, every day it was something different, but he just was never the same after this. Did he became, become violent? Um, not like really to me, but um, sometimes he would get angry sometimes. Agitated? I think so, yeah. Short fused? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Couldn't sleep? Yes. I remember being on the balcony of the Icon where Mrs. Adelson lives, having a conversation with her about this case? Um, briefly. 
All right. And what was her demeanor? If you, do you know what I mean by that? How was she acting? Yeah, I know what demeanor means, but <laughs> she was, um, mm -hmm. everyone was obviously upset about this and it's, you know, sh it wasn't, she wasn't happy, so. She was stressed out, right? Yeah, of course. Um, did she have puffy eyes? I don't remember. Did she complain about not sleeping? Mm, possibly. And did she make a statement to you about Dan Markell? Um, yes, I believe so. What was that statement? Um, just that all, everything was awful and it feels like, um, you know, like it's, I don't know. I don't really, I'm sure you have it there. So. I do. Do you know what it is? I kind of briefly remember, but. Um, Did she say that she feels like Dan's back from the grave, like haunting her? Um, I, I don't know, like, if they were those exact words. I think she was just so, frust like, stressed out and upset that that's how it came out, so. He told you he loved you? Of course, yes. He told you you were the only one? Um, he said that, but I mean, over time, I got to know well, him. Well, so. hindsight is twenty twenty, but at the time, you thought you were the only one. Right, right. Then I got back with him. You got back with him. <laughs> then you find out that in that two months time span, he ended up getting Wendy's boyfriend's nanny pregnant. Uh, yes. Does Charles like to go to the Philippines? Um, not lately, but like, uh... Right, and he would tell me something, but now I... That was around the time he was acting weird, so... And he's the type of guy, like, if you catch him, like, in a... I want to say a lie. He has a very good way of trying to talk his way out of it, right? Yes. He was able to do all type of things without you suspecting anything, right? Um, not exactly. I would suspect, but he was, yeah, he was good at, um, hiding things. Yeah. Being Charlie, I guess <laughs> you could say. When he says at the very beginning of that clip, if they had any evidence, we'd already be gone to the airport by now. Objection. What did you understand? I didn't hear that. Overruled. I didn't even hear anything that the, the recording was saying. You didn't hear but any I did. of that? I didn't hear anything that you, like the line that you just said, I did not hear that on the recording. When that recording started, you didn't hear him say, if they had any evidence, we would have already gone to the no, airport by now. If this person went to the cops, they're going to be asked, you know, well, where's the weapon? Did you witness it? No, you just heard a rumor. Well, that's worth zero. You have to get them on a wire. You have to get the person to confess. Outside of that, there's no evidence. That's what you heard, right? Um, parts of it, yes, ma'am. Okay. And he's saying, right, that if you guys all keep quiet, no one's going to have any evidence of you, right? I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't know what he was talking about. He's saying scenarios over and over. Why is he talking to this about, about this with you? I don't know. What is he saying the cops aren't going to have evidence of? I have no idea. You had no clue? No. And you didn't ask either, did you? That's your testimony? I don't remember what we were talking about or if I asked him. I mean, I'm re I hear myself responding, but... Right, but you, you did say that you never asked why the cops would be running this undercover investigation, right? I believe so. Okay. Has Wendy Adelson ever worked in the office? No. So if her parents put her, gave her a paycheck every couple of weeks, you know, but she didn't physically work there, that's something that they could do for their daughter, right? I don't know. Okay. You wouldn't know, right? I wouldn't know. Okay. And so you have no idea the arrangement that was made between Charles Adelson and Catherine Magbanwa as to why she was getting those paychecks, right? No. And you're not in a position really to ask the Adelsons why they write checks, right? No. The best people to tell this jury about what that was for would be 
Donna Adelson and Harvey Adelson, right? I don't know. Okay, they're not in Tallahassee, are they? They're not coming here to testify under a state subpoena? I don't know. Did the Adelson Institute have a cleaning service? Yes. Okay, was that a husband and wife team? Yes. And you're, you saw them, the husband and wife team? I know them, yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, was it Catherine McBanoa? No. Okay, that's all. I sat on a bench last week to watch the boys play. An older woman sitting next to me commented on how adorable my boys are and asked, what does your husband do? I hate this question. I haven't yet said he doesn't do much because he's dead, but I think it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs>